Hey guys, it's your boy, Brad Brad here, bringing you another awesome video! Hey guys, it's your boy, Brad Brad here, and today we're bringing you another awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! GOAT format video. This time we're bringing a deck that I usually think is trash, but we tried doing our own take on it. That's right, guys. We got Grave Keepers out here, as you can see. And um, a lot of you may or may not know this, but Grave Keepers is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's OG archetypes. And nowadays, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is all archetypes, right? There's no just like um, generic good stuff uh, decks anymore. They're pretty much all just archetypes, right? And Grave Keepers is one of the OG ones, actually, believe it or not. Back in the day, resolves around this card, Necro Valley, right here, which gains 500 attack for each of your to each of your grave tapers and defense as well. And cards that would be banished um, or be moved to a different place in the graveyard cannot uh, cannot do that. And it has some other effects that are only in a goat format because they change this fucking card about a thousand times. And pretty much all you need to know is that your opponent can banish move cards from the graveyard. Is all that you need to know. So premature barriers offline. They can't and they can't use chaos mon. They can't special summon chaos monsters rather, and can't use soul release if you're for some reason running that card, right? So we got a pretty cool deck here on uh, Grave Keepers. Our own take on it, right? And uh, the biggest spice we're using here is Grave Keepers Watcher. Now a lot of you guys might know might not know this, but Grave Keeper Watcher is um, one of the only hand traps in Goat format, actually, believe it or not. And this card right here reads that during the player's turn, when the opponent activates a spell or trap or monster effect that could make them discard when it resolves, you would send this card to the graveyard uh, from your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation. If you do, destroy it. So, what does this work on? Um, graceful Charity, right? So, uh, in Goat format, the only thing it works on is Graceful Charity, right? So, like, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Ryan, why, 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 why are you running an effect monster that only works on one card? Right? And I, I was thinking of throwing this deck into some other decks. It's kind of like Jar Robber as a joke. But, like, then I realized, like, it's crap for, like, literally anything but Gravekeepers. And even Gravekeepers is debatable if it's good or not. Because it doesn't plus you anyway. Literally, all it does is just stops from is Graceful Charity from resolving. And you can technically get a Dark in the Graveyard if you're in a Chaos strategy, right? But, like, yeah, and it's not even have good stats or anything like that. It's the only card that actually, I think it's the only card that actually works. And it might work on some other cards in Go Format. I don't think there's any others, though. It's, it's the only relevant card that it really works on in Go Format is Graceful Charity, right? So, like, I run in this deck because you have the three Necro Valley to boost them up, for example. And he actually has stats, unlike other hand traps. So he'll go up to 1,500. And 1,500, yeah, is weak, okay? I'll be the first to admit that. That's, that's hardly anything. But, like, you know what? The fact he has stats and can negate Gristle Charity is kind of cool. He's dark as well. As you see, we're running the BLS there, right? So we're just we're running the BLS to kind of win the game out of nowhere. So we got the Warrior Lady, the two Moth, and the Reflect Bounder, and the Zavorg. Throw some extra additional lights in there with the Great Keepers, right? And I don't know. I want to try seeing how his watch does with um with with the rest of the Great Keepers. I know most of them don't run it because why would you run this when you can run more of Assailant here or Spear Soldier, right? We actually have relevant effects, but the problem is with these effects, they're only battle effects, right? And I, I mean, it's good to have battle. It's good that this deck to make this deck more aggro as aggro as possible, as you see in some of the replays. We do play pretty aggro with this deck, but like I kind of like the control aspect of having Watcher in here at the same time because it can again go to 1500, and if you have a clear board that you can just hit into, you know, since we're running like the great giant Trunade and the um. I was smashing grounds on the side deck, but like, you know, we have that giant, we have the giant true nade there, just clear stuff all the way, snatch deal, and like the spy or whatever, I don't know, like just, if there's nothing on the, in, the, in your way, your uh, watcher's going to hit hit in probably, right? And 1500 is nothing to laugh at, it's not the worst, not the best either, right? But if you can great negate Graceful Charity though, that's where we're running three of this, so that way you're more likely to negate Graceful Charity, it can be kind of sick. So that's why I have three of this card, I think it's pretty cool, it doesn't come up, and it's funny because it actually would have in the replay if my delinquent duo didn't hit my opponent's um, Graceful Charity. Out of all the cards I could hit, I hit his Graceful Charity, which is like, wow. Um, but anyways, you'll see you'll see in the replay, though. 
But like, yeah, it actually would have came up, which is insane. I never thought I'd see this car come up. I mean, I see Jar Robert resolve a couple million, many times, but like, I never thought I'd see this card resolve because this is the only deck I'd ever play in. But yeah, so it's a pretty cool deck. It's a little bit aggro, a little control at the same time, and a little bit of a uh, little bit of stall with a reflect bounder, and obviously your spy and your your one guard. Undebating, changing um, out the uh, soldier or pro actually the assailant. The assailant's the one I don't think is very good myself. Just putting one assailant in and putting another guard myself. But I'm not, I haven't decided on that yet. And right now, what we have right here is going pretty well over test. So we're going to do the card by card here now, guys. Anyways, so we're running one BLS, as you can tell. And I know most Greek Reaper decks don't run this card, but I'm running it just because BLS is just insane. Is the thing. If you can run BLS in your deck, and considering all the Greek Reapers are darks, you know, I figured, you know what? Some of the light monsters like Lady and Faith and uh, Bounder and Zaborg are kind of crazy. Especially, you know, right? Especially, like, ladies in Zaborg. And, and Zaborg works with this deck, I guess. All right, so that's where we're on the BLS, because what I'm trying to say. Is that BLS just wins you the game out of nowhere. The card's overpowered. If you can run this deck, it's one philosophy in Go format that I have with building decks. Is that you always want to put the uh, uh, Black Luster Soldier into your deck, if at all possible, right? No matter what deck it is, if you, can, if you have enough lights and darks, run this card. It's only one card. You're not going to break on most likely. And if you can get to a point where you can just win the game out of nowhere with it, GG, right? Card's insane. So that's why we run one of it. Then we got the one Breaker of the Magical Warrior, just because he's also insane. And then the Cyber Jar. I don't run Morphing Jar because I find, I just think Cyber Jar is overall better, especially since this is an aggro strategy. You're probably going to have your Necro Valley up. Yeah, most people are running Storm and Mysto Space Siphon, but those are only at one. If Breaker comes out on Jar, they're not going to be able to get the counter on it because he's special summon. He only gets the counter on normal summon, right? So, like, there's only, like, tip. most decks are only going to run, like, two cards that'll take care of your three Necro Valley, for example. So if you get out, like, three multiple Gravekeepers with Necro Valley while this card resolves, that's insane, right? So that's why I'd rather be running this than Jar. I just, I feel like Jar just advantages your opponent more than it advantages you is the thing. Because most of the time it's going to resolve on your opponent's um turn right and then you're not going to have anything on field and then they'll have all the advantage from drawing five cards by the time they resolve by the time jar morphing jar resolves so i figure well if if it's going to resolve my opponent's turn cyber jar is just better because then i get monsters on the field and this deck's an aggro deck so that's why i run the cyber jar over the morphing jar myself i think it's a lot better for grave keepers i think it's just better in general i think most decks are better off with cyber jar myself but I mean, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Morphing Jar, to tell you the truth, in uh, in this war map. I just think that, like, cards like um, BLS and Burn just benefit way too much from uh, Morphing Jar flipping on your opponent's turn. For Cyber Jar, you can benefit from flipping on your turn, because the likelihood of your opponent being able to destroy everything that you special summon off Cyber Jar is pretty unlikely, right? So, that's why I think it's good. I don't know, debatable, but I like it. The one warrior lady, because she's just insane. Plus, she's a light for the BLS. She can help stall the deck, as you can kind of see we're almost trying to do with this deck. And you got the two assailant. Like I said, I might cut these down, but right now he's doing all right. Um, the one guard, this card, good control card. And that's why I'm thinking of cutting the assailant, just because he's good for control. He's got the high defense as well. The stall the game a little bit. That's kind of why we're running the um, Reflect Bounder as well, right? Then we got the Spear Soldier. Of course, you know, Spear Soldier, in my opinion, is better than Assailant, just because you're going to be piercing more than you're going to be changing a face-up defense, face-up attack position monster to defense, for example. And most of the time, like, I don't know, what cards are you going to get over, right? You're going to get over a Breaker, for example. You won't get over, you'll get, I guess you'll get over a Lady, but not like it matters kind of thing, right? I don't know. I don't, like, like I mean, people don't run Reflect Bounder. Most people don't run this card. I'm one of the only people that runs this card, it feels like. Right? So, like, I don't know. Um, then we, obviously, you got the three spy. There's no way. It doesn't matter what kind of great keeper you're running. You always run three spy. Always, always run three spy. Best great keeper by far. Searches them. Has the high defense. Uh, it's got a decent stat line as well for a decent attack line. Goes up to 1700 with the Necro Valley. Insane. Right? And then, like I said, the Krieger Keeper's Watchers, the, the main spice of this deck. And then we got the three, uh, two Magician of Faith, because, I mean, your Necro Valley might go to the grave, because Heavy Storm is pretty, um, I mean, it's out there, right? And for and sometimes you, you might just win by having Necro Valley, right? And plus, you can get your other Broken card, you can get the other Trinity card, since we're running all three of them. Your Snatch Steel, your Premature Barrier, your, your True Nade back. You can get anything back with it. It's just insane. She's just insane. 
Uh, the Reflect Bounder could just to slow the game down a bit there. A lot of people aren't going to attack into this card is the thing. Majority of people won't. And uh, yeah. And then we also got the um, Zaborg, the Thunder Monarch, of course. This just kills your opponent's monster because you're going to probably be stalling with your Spy or maybe even your Guard, for example. And if they have a monster you just can't get rid of. That can be annoying. Well, you just a Borg pop. Um, you obviously got um, your Trinity. They're spread out because I organized them. Yeah, you got the Trinity, obviously. The True Trunade. I don't run Heavy Storm just because of Necro Valley and a couple of traps for running. It's not super trap heavy, so I might change that around and put... Uh, what do you call it in there and put uh, a heavy storm in as well but i think the true true nade will do all right for now because again it's just aggro so you just want to get shit all the way and hit it in as much as possible right you got the one msd of course three necro valley and as you can tell we're running one terraforming as well i should have organized it before i did the video that's okay though and uh, this is the ratio i like the best myself because i don't like having three terraform and three necro valley because necro valley isn't like a modern Yu Gi Oh uh, field spell card where it just reads win the game right this is one of those ones where it's kind of situational. So it's like you run free with the terraforming because you're always, always going to have one with this ratio is what I like about it. Where if you ran three terraforming, you're pro you might brick on the terraformings, which can be annoying because you're not going to play any other field spells. Let's just put it that. Let's just be honest. Okay. You're only going to be playing the Necro Valley, right? So like, yeah. And then we got the two knock, of course, because... You, you need it pretty much, um, like I said, with the Pot of Greed. Uh, the Premature Burial goes well with this. The True Nade, of course. And, like, I don't know. It's just, it's an insane card. Some great keepers that don't play it, I think it's insane. Right? Especially with True Nade, it's just ridiculous. If it has nothing on the field, gee. Um, Royal Tribute, because this card can be crazy. This card can be absolutely insane. Um, so we're only wanting one of it because we do have a lot of monsters in this deck. So we don't want them all to go to the graveyard, for example, right? But if you, like, yeah, sometimes this card can be insane is the thing. And, yeah, so, like, if I was running a little bit less monsters, I might run it, too. I don't know. It's, again, this is a tough one just because, it's like, if you lose all your monsters, too, then that sucks. But, like, if, you're, but like, if your opponent only has monsters, holy shit, that's just insane. Then the Snatch Deal, of course. Like I said, the one Terraforming. Then we got the Traps. We got the one Mirror Force, of course. The one Ring of Destruction, of course. Then the two Ray of Spirit. The Grave Keepers, Monster Reborn, which is a trap. Unaffected by Necro Valley as well. Not a bad card. Can be alright. Um, we don't want to call the Haunted just because it is affected by Necro Valley. So we run these instead because 90% of our monsters are Grave Keepers. I should say 90%. But most of them are Grave Keepers. So I might cut that down to one just because we don't have enough. I don't think we run enough Grave Keepers. For it to really be good at two. At the same time, with these always going these going to graveyard operation charity could be good. Uh the one Sekiratsu armor and as well the Trendle Tribute. And then inside deck, we just kinda got the usual stuff. We got a little bit of spice we'll talk about over there. Um we got the one uh Karibo, of course. I think Karibo is necessary in go format to be cited. Um the two Kaiku, your two Mystic Swordsmen, as well as the two Mind Com. I cut that down to one, unsure yet. But this deck does kind of struggle with uh defense position monsters like with, uh, with spies for example so that's why i kind of have four of these and mine con can just be good for like cyber jar gg kind of thing uh the mystic walk for the burning smashing ground is actually very good oddly enough against fucking uh one of the decks we played which is really funny destiny like like if we're going first the one royal decree just in case we're playing a super trap heavy deck and we just want to get rid of all our traps and just put that in there and then the three secret bail which i think could be pretty cool because you are doing a lot of damage pretty quickly and your spies and that can add up so like and again it was really funny it worked really well against the deck we were playing and uh yeah yeah no secret barrel can be kind of insane it depends on the deck and it's, and like i feel like it might be a good side option for go format for like people who are very solemn judgment heavy because three solemn judgments puts you down to 2k and if you have three secret barrels you're probably gonna win the game for example right so, like, eh, debatable if that situation is worth running it. But I think for, like, great keepers, though, it's pretty good. So, that's the deck, though, guys. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe. We uh, we do have some more Gold Format videos come out, as per usual. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this deck profit. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, we'll leave the description down below for the deck in the description. Link to the deck in the description. That's what I'm trying to say. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bread, bread, signing out.